गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट अबाउट एक्मो मॉनिटरिंग वन इम्पॉर्टेंट कोट इज टू अक्वायर नॉलेज वन मस्ट स्टडी बट टू अक्वायर विजडम वन मस्ट ऑब्जर्व सो वन नीड टू हैव अ गुड ऑब्जर्वेशनल स्किल वैन यू मॉनिटर अ क्रिटिकली इल पेशेंट एस्पेशली वैन द पेशेंट आर ऑन एक्मो दिस इज अ वेरी बेजिक सर्किट ऑफ एक्मो Uh, the different the cannulas one you see here is the drainage cannula which uh, receives the blood from the patient then you see the uh, centrifugal pump and after that you see the oxygenator and which is attached to the uh, humidifier uh, this is the front console uh, console of the ecmo where you can measure the different uh, various pressures like venous pressure and uh, arterial pressure here you can see the blender where you can see the when you can manage your fio2 and sweep gas according to the abg where if you want to increase or decrease the pco2 level on the abg now what all things to monitor when you manage patients on ecmo the so first of all you need to have a good observational and physician uh, you should be a good physician and you should do a good head to toe examination when you go on the round when the you patient when you uh, assess the patient on ecmo Uh, after a good head to toe examination you see the uh, uh, continuous cardiac rhythm monitoring now in rhythm monitoring again uh, there are various rhythms like tachycardia the various reasons of tachycardia may be hypovolemia or fever sometimes patient may have arrhythmias this may be because of electrolyte dysfunction or inbuilt cardiac abnormalities another important modality is the uh, pulse oximetry which is also called which is in terms of, of uh, spo2 this spo2 measurement is important in va ecmo where you want to rule out the uh, something called as harlequin syndrome so where in harlequin syndrome your upper limb spo2 will be less as compared to lower limb spo2 some of the patient are very much vasoconstricted so in that case patients it is very difficult to measure spo2 another important thing is mixed venous oxygen saturation this is again important tool basically uh, what you see in mixed venous oxygen saturation it see it it justify your uh, oxygen delivery and oxygen consumption now in many of the patient when when you you have a, a lower oxygen uh, 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 delivery this may be because of your low blood flow so in that case you can increase the ecmo blood flow you can also increase the fio2 if your SP, if your mixed venous oxygen saturation is low in many of the patients mixed venous on the same or constant fio2 the mixed venous oxygen saturation are, is high this may be because of the ischemia where the oxygen consumption is less another important modality is the are the invasive artery and venous blood pressure uh, blood pressures uh, temperature respiratory rate and antidal cardamon uh, antidal co2 that is etco2 now when you start a patient on vv ecmo uh, initially your etco2 will be less like uh, it is less than or equal to 5 mm of mercury so as the patient improves uh, clinically or uh, the this etco2 will improve and this will give a good prognostic sign uh, when you monitor the patient uh, fluid intake and output output you have to monitor in terms of urine output Uh, position of the cannula daily you have to assess uh, especially to uh, rule out the something called as recirculation uh, which which is very common in vv ecmo so this position of the cannula you can assess by via the chest x rays uh, another important tools are abgs daily you have to on frequently you have to do abgs where you see the po2 pco2 and lactates in pa in patients of vv ecmo po2 target po2 should be more than 50 mm of mercury and in va va ecmo your target po2 should be more than 60 mm of mercury and your pco2 should be less than 40 mm of mercury lactates are another important tool in abg it will uh, justify your uh, perfusion level it will justify sometimes you see the pseudo uh, increase in the lactates may be because of the higher inotropes so again this lactates is again an important tool when you uh, see the patient on ecmo uh, chest x ray again a patient with vv ecmo to see the prognosis of the patient if the x ray is improving on a daily basis that is again a good sign for the vv ecmo neuro monitoring is very important basically neuro monitoring will uh, will required in those patient where you are planning to give a, a va ecmo and suppose the patient is uh, uh, going through the uh, harlequin syndrome 
where the cerebral perfusion is very much hampered. So suppose if your, the cerebral perfusion is uh, decreased, this is uh, identified with the help of cerebral oximetry and NIRS, which is nothing but a near infrared spectroscopy. Uh, we usually monitor here in our institute NIRS. Uh, NIRS, uh, uh, in spite of the number, it is the percentage change of the NIRS from the baseline is more important. If the NRS uh, is uh, decreasing by 20%, this is important and which is justify that the patient is having poor cerebral perfusion. In that case, you might need to increase the uh, ECMO pump uh, blood flow or you uh, suppose the patient is uh, uh, having a low HB or EPO2 is low, you may increase the FiO2 and you might transfuse the patient. Idea is to improve the cerebral perfusion. Now we see individually the different components of the ECMO. First of all, the circuit check, how you check the circuit when you start the uh, any uh, initiation of the ECMO. So you need to do a complete checkup of the ECMO. You have to see the plugs, if it, it's charging, different connections, alarms and its entire integrity of the uh, ECMO. Position of the device, especially the console should be facing the entrance so that any person who is entering into the theater or into the ICU room, they can directly see the uh, pressures of the venous pressure and the arterial pressure, what is, go what is the flow and always there should be a flashlight uh, should be on on the uh, uh, tubing so that they can identify the color also of the venous and, uh, and the arterial cannula. Power supply should always be on and they are correctly plugged. And alarm system should always be on so that you can come to know of any troubleshooting or uh, fluid connectors uh, you have to take care of and you should avoid any kinks, tensions and the right connection should be placed on the uh, fluid tubing so that uh, you can uh, prevent any, any uh, mishaps. Now cannulas and tubing, once you start the, uh, uh, when you attach the can, uh, cannula and then when they attach with the tubings, it is very important to take the suture at the junction of cannula and the tubing so that when you uh, mobilize the patient or for the uh, bedding or any uh, movement or trans transfer of the patient, it is very important that the patient, uh, cannula should not be uh, misplaced. So that you should have a good uh, adequate sutures on the cannula. Connections of the stop cocks should be adequately uh, uh, placed and uh, as I told in the last my last lecture, the num more the number of complex uh, complexity of the ECMO, more the chances of mishaps. And if the stop cocks are also are one of the things by which can uh, entrap the air and also the, it, it is a, a site for the clot formation. Color differentiation is again an important thing that one should uh, see constantly. Uh, this is the uh, dark colored uh, cannula which is uh, which is a drainage cannula which is it contains a deoxygenated blood and this is the arterial cannula which contains a oxygenated blood. This color differentiation should always be uh, uh, you should look out. Uh, circuitry some of the circuitry parameters like preload after load and your uh, blood flow rate. Now what is preload now important thing in ECMO is the patient uh, you, uh, the preload a patient does not patient is constantly dependent on the preload. Like in CPB circuit, uh, there is a reservoir. That means patient uh, reservoir gives you uh, sometimes gives you the volume if the patient is required. But in ECMO, this thing is not possible. So you should have a good uh, U-volumia. Size and length of the cannula should be adequately uh, 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 placed, and you have to decide the uh, size of the cannula preemptively. Simultaneously, you have to maintain the venous tone. Afterload is another uh, circuitry parameter. It again depends upon the vascular resistance, position and size and length of the reinfusion cannula. Another important parameters are blood flow rate, uh, RPM and gas flow rate. Now blood flow rate is directly proportional to the preload and it is inversely proportional to the uh, afterload. Uh, gas flow rate is again important uh, parameter. Usually ratio of gas flow rate, uh, gas flow and blood flow should be 0.5 to 0.5 is to 1 and you can increase up to 1.5 is to 1 depending upon how much PCO2 you want to uh, remove. Gas blender setting, uh, it again depends upon the how much FiO2, uh, how much PO2 you get in, uh, in your ABG. If your PO2 is less, you can always increase your FiO2. Uh, CO2 removal, removal is always with the help of gas flow. So gas flow is nothing but the amount of gas that is been uh, transferred to the membrane. So you in, when you increase the gas flow, there is a removal of the CO2. 
Then you have to maintain a post membrane PO2 at, at least about 150 millimeter of mercury and your PCO2 level should be 40 millimeter of mercury. This is the prerequisite when you want initial setting of the uh, ECMO and these things you have to maintain over a period of time. Alarms as I already discussed you should be uh, careful, uh, careful about the alarm setting. Uh, there should be a uh, setting regard according to the therapeutic goal. And it is always recommended to maintain a 2 litre per minute flow to prevent backflow. There should always be availability of emergency kit in case of any mishaps like clamps and then emergency hand cranks if the power failure, emergency supplies of different connectors, tubings and uh, uh, you should be ready with another pre-primed pump if the pump failure is present. Now the pressure monitoring is another important tool in the monitoring part. Venous pressure should not be more than 100 millimeter of mercury. If the venous pressure is high, there is a chances of spoliation. And also if, the venous, if there is a higher venous pressure, which signifies that there is a presence of hypovolemia or there is some kinking or the occlusion of the venous line. Uh, then arterial pressure should not be more than 200 to 250 millimeter of mercury. If the arterial pressure is increasing, that means there is some occlusion at the, uh, at the, at the end of the arterial end or maybe because of kinking uh, or it may be because of the increased preload. There is something also called as delta P. Now what is delta P? It is the uh, pressure difference through the oxygenator. Now this delta P should not be increasing by 20 milliliter of mercury per hour and if it is increasing it is an indicator of clot which may lead to the pump failure. Now the question arises when you, in, uh, when you change the oxygenator. So uh, for the oxygenator change you need, need to have a delta P and again you have to constantly see, see the ABG. If in ABG if PO2 is constantly decreasing then it is an indicator of oxygenator changing. Uh, another important aspect is pain and sedation. Now when you apply a VA ECMO, VA ECMO is usually done under local anesthesia. You may require sometimes sedation or you may apply this patient to the extubated patient also. But in VV ECMO you always need to have a need to uh, do under deep sedation because you don't want patient ventilator discrepancy because this patient VV ECMO they are mostly of ARDS patient or pulmonary dysfunction patient. So for initial few days you need to give a good sedation uh, for uh, initial few days. Uh, ECMO membrane lung that is the uh, oxygenator they trap some of the medication then hence you may require higher doses of sedation and uh, analgesia. However, you need to individualize the patient according how much requirement, uh, how much analgesia or, or sedation is required on regular basis. Infection that you again is a concern in the patient of ECMO, you daily see the WBC counts and if required you send the blood culture and accordingly you step up or uh, de-escalate the antibiotics. At each round you should see the integrity of the cannula dressing, here you can see the dressing. Uh, this dressing should be uh, dry, there should not be any bleeding or any, uh, uh, any uh, redness or uh, swelling. A daily assessment of the insertion point of the cannulas by looking at the redness, swelling, bleeding or potential infection. Now this is the uh, use of chlorhexidine clo uh, gluconate impregnated sponge, it reduces the chances of infection and also it reduces the uh, frequent changing of the dressing up to 7 days and also it allows the visual uh, inspection of the insertion point. Skin care is again an important aspect in ECMO patient. Now uh, this is as I already told this is the cannula and this is the tubing and this is a junction of cannula and tubing which is adequately snugged with the sutures. Now what is the problem here? When the patient is constantly bedridden on ECMO, there is some peripheral edema, there is some uh, 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 heparin induced hematoma this may cause the pressure source. Now, nowadays now to avoid this pressure source there is something called as hydrocolloids or foam dressing which is available in the market that you can apply here and by that way you can decrease the chances of pressure source. But again this increases the risk of decannulation while we um, uh, uh, do the bedding or mobilize the patient. Bleeding is again an important and one of the deadly, deadly uh, aspect in the patient of ECMO that one has to be considered when you monitor the patient. Uh, ECMO cannula itself is an artificial thing and it is inert and non-biological -biologic, material. So it itself increases the chances of bleeding hence one need to do the anticoagulation. So when you start the uh, ECMO in the initial phase you give the 5000 units of uh, bolus units of heparin. 
and then you maintain the APTT according to the heparin infusion. Now here some of the recommendation that has been uh, maintained. If the patient is on VA ECMO, your target uh, of uh, maintaining APTT that is 1.8 to 2 times of normal. In, in case of VB ECMO, it should be 1.5 to 1.8 times of uh, normal level. And if you add any another calula like VAB ECMO, then in that case you need to have a higher uh, values of APTT that is 2 to 2.2 times of normal level. Now there is always challenge with how now to control the uh, post operative bleeding and to minimize the clot. So one has to be very uh, careful uh, and titrate the doses of heparin so that you do not cause excessive uh, bleeding. Uh, now you always assess the ENT uh, like ear, ear, nose and throat assessment and it is almost unavoidable uh, bleeding in these uh, sources. Uh, suppose the bleeding is present in the, into the nasal cavities, you uh, gently give the compression for in each nostril for 5 minutes and even if, no, if it is not uh, possible to control the bleeding with this maneuver, you can apply the resorbable hemostatic wicks in each nostril, nostrils and also the nasal compression probe in the posterior fossa to stop bleeding. Mouth care is again an important thing. Uh, if there is a bleeding into the mouth, you gently do the suction of the blood and clots you should remove with the saline. Mouthwash in this situation should be avoided because they contain alcohol based uh, solution and they persistent, they cause the persistent bleeding and also cause the burning sensation to the patient. Packing must be uh, do, done with the humidified saline every 4 to 6 hourly, but uh, then it also should be removed after 48 hours because constant packing into the oral cavity can cause the oral ulcer. Uh, neurologically, you have to see the patient, assess the patient regularly, daily on the rounds by looking at the bilateral pupils, what is the level of consciousness by Glasgow Coma Scale. Uh, this level of consciousness is very important because when your patient is on heparin, there are again chances of intracranial bleed. When you assess the uh, pulm uh, pulmonary functions, lung secretion is again an important thing. Patient is on VV ECMO, they usually have a ARDS or any other pulmonary uh, disease. Uh, they are on the uh, heparin. Now also they, there is a chances of DIC. So use of warming and humidified bronchial tree uh, nebulizers, they could minimize the clot formation. Hematuria is again another sign which is shows that there is a presence of there is some bleeding is ongoing. You also see the digestive tract, where suppose the patient is having bleeding through the digestive tract or you see the uh, bleeding into the RT, uh, straight away you can give the gastric lavage and you can check whether the, the bleeding is decreased or not and you can start the antacids. Now in general, patients uh, who, have, who are having bleeding, you know, your target is to maintain a blood count. Because the low HB as I already discussed, it decreases your oxygenation uh, part and also the perfusion. Uh, now uh, there is a always debate now, when, how much hemoglobin you should maintain for the ECMO patient. Uh, there is always a debate now, uh, 7 is the uh, cutoff point to transfuse the blood or you maintain the 12 gram per deciliter. In our institute, we manage, uh, we maintain a 12 gram of deciliter of uh, hemoglobin. Idea again is to maintain a good oxygenation uh, and perfusion of the uh, important organs. Uh, suppose the patient is having excessive bleeding, you can discontinue the heparin for a short period of time, but then again you have to be very cautious because again there are chances of clot formation. So this is a, one of the very uh, tricky things when you manage a patient of bleeding. If nothing is uh, uh, causing or nothing is cause, decreasing the bleeding, then recombinant factor 7 is the last resort. Now apart from bleeding, there is again a risk of thromboembolic risk. The one has to be very meticulously do the surveillance of the oxygenator because uh, most of the time you see the clot into the oxygenator if the patient is having a thromboembolic risk. Now documentation and detection of the, uh, this clots is very important to prevent CNS and ECMO failure. Now differentiation of clot is important, there, is, there are two types of clot, one is normal clot and another is a blood clot. Now what is normal clot? Now this clot are very small and usually they are present on the top of the oxygenator and usually they are unavoidable because of the, that part is because of the stagnation of the blood at that particular area. But bad clot you should identify which has a larger clot and which may occlude your, uh, 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 occlude your arterial line. 
These are the fibrin strands these which are also which can also be seen on the oxygenator. Now again here the question arises now when to change the oxygenator as I already discussed you have to see the different parameters also. If the patient's uh, ABG constantly shows a decrease into the PO2, if your afterload or the drainage or if or arterial cannula pressure increases, then you might need to uh, change the uh, uh, oxygenator or entire circuit. Now hemolysis. Now hemolysis is again an important factor into the ECMO. Suppose there is an increase afterload and your uh, pump flow, blood flow is very high. Now this causes the high turbulent flow. And this high turbulent flow will lead to the hemolysis. Uh, high energy blood suction like when you apply the higher pressure into the, uh, into the drainage cannula. Because of the hypovolemia there is a, uh, again the chances of hemolysis. Uh, sometimes flow competition between the pulmonary artery and the native heart function when the heart function recovers. They can or because of the competition there is can also be the hemolysis. So when there is a rise in free plasma HB level, if it is more than 50 mg per deciliter with drop of platelet and RBC count, it indicates there is a hemolysis. Now how to treat the hemolysis? Uh, obviously you have to replace the blood loss with the uh, pack blood, uh, pack, uh, blood PCV, uh, platelet and fresh frozen plasma. The curative treatment is the changing of ECMO circuit. Now here you can see the cola colored urine which is nothing but the, because of the hemolysis. And when the patient is on C uh, renal replacement therapy, on the effluent side, you, you can also see the uh, hematuria. Now, hemodynamic monitoring. Now, this is again an important thing, uh, especially in VA ECMO, your idea, your goal is to maintain a mean arterial pressure, not only in VA ECMO, also in VV ECMO. Your goal is to maintain the mean arterial pressure more than 65 millimeter of mercury. Now, here the important thing, what you can see is there is absence of pulse pressure. Now this is very important uh, especially in VA ECMO when you start ec uh, and VA ECMO uh, obviously because of the uh, low ejection fraction on low LV or LV dysfunction your pulse pressure will not be efficient the ejection will not be efficient. So as an as, as an on patient is on ECMO and VA ECMO when the patient improves you can see the there is a presence of pulse pressure. Now pulsatile flow is a sign of LV improvement. Uh, if the pulse pressure is less than 10 millimeter of mercury, this is an indication of myocardial stunning. Limb ischemia, again important thing, especially in peripheral uh, ECMO and peripheral VA ECMO or VV ECMO. Uh, uh, in VA ECMO, uh, what you do is uh, you in the arterial line, you apply a, another reperfusion cannula towards the distal portion of the femoral artery. Now here is added to maintain to maintain the uh, perfusion to the distal limb of the uh, uh, distal limb. Uh, superficial here you uh, deliberately uh, do the reperfusion uh, cannulation uh, into the superficial femoral artery, and constantly you do the surveillance. Now in this picture you can see this uh, superficial uh, or reperfusion line itself is clot, and there is a presence of fibrin. Now these things you have to be very careful because this over a period of time will lead to the limb ischemia or in that case you have to remove the reperfusion line or may apply the another reperfusion line distally. But this reperfusion line should always be removed. You uh, come to know the limb ischemia by clinical examination like temp comparing the temperature of both the legs by uh, just a touching SpO2 or NIRS. You can also see the DPPT or the lower limbs. And uh, also you can uh, come to know the initials, in initial stage you can come to know into the uh, uh, pulsatile, uh, pulsatility of the like as I told you is a DPPT. Check the stiffness uh, color of the limb, initially it will be, uh, first will be it is a uh, white color, then the blisters will come and then in the last stage there will be a necrosis. Uh, fluid management, in fluid management, uh, chattering with variation in ECMO flow causing hypotension, it indicates the hypovolemia. So in that case, you need to transpose the volume. Sometimes excessive volume itself causing uh, peripheral edema and increases your play load and also it causes the uh, uh, dif difficulty in blood flow, uh, there will be increase in the blood flow. Uh, Pul sometimes because of the excessive volume there will be pulmonary edema because especially in VA ECMO well heart is already uh, very sick. Diuretics sometimes you may need to remove this peripheral edema to maintain the urine output more than 0.5 ml per kg per minute. 
if this uh, urine output is not achieved then you may require renal replacement therapy sometime into the uh, failing heart where the heart is uh, well the lv is not adequately ejecting you may require atrial septectomy or sometimes you may need to add uh, impella over the ecmo now some of the specifics of vv ecmo here a uh, very important thing is a double lumen cannula which is called as avalon cannula we place this avalon cannula it's a single stage it's a single uh, play uh, single cannula uh, with a double lumen what what is importance of this cannula is the drainage there is a two parts of the drainage one is the svc side and another is the ivc side and another uh, lumen which is present inside it 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 should be placed towards the tricuspid valve uh, usually this avalon cannula should be placed uh, with the guidance of uh, trans uh, thoracic echocardiogram uh, tra tte trans thoracic echocardiography or uh, trans esophageal echocardiography uh, in vv ecmo spo2 about 85 to 90% is acceptable uh, in vv ecmo where your pulmonary function is not good so ventilator sh uh, should be placed on uh, pressure control mode so if the same pressure on pre same pressure control if your tidal volume improves that means this patient is going towards the recovery uh, in vv ecmo one important concern is the recirculation usually what you can see into the femorojugular cannulation uh, what happens in because in recirculation because of the very uh, near uh, placement of the uh, jugular and femoral cannula or if the pre, uh, if the uh, blood flow is very high there may be recirculation or the intrathoracic pressure variations are high now how to monitor this recirculation uh, uh, by the direction of the flow you daily see the chest x-ray to see the cannula placement and strict control of ventilator to prevent intrathoracic variation treatment wise uh, what you can do to prevent recirculation you mobilize the cannulas switching if the recirculation is not improving even after the mobilization of cannula uh, you can use the avalon cannula dual lumen cannula to prevent the recirculation and you can also add any ad additional cannula uh, to another femoral uh, vein now specifics of va ecmo now important thing to see the uh, va ecmo is the differential hypoxia this is also called as harlequin syndrome or also and also called as uh, north south syndrome uh, this is different this differential hypoxia usually you see into the peripheral vo ecmo now what happens in uh, this thing uh, because of the failing lv or if the pulmonary function is impaired this desaturated blood they are they uh, ejected from the lv and there is a point where the meeting point when the femoral artery uh, is cannulated and femoral uh, flow they uh, counteract with this uh, lv uh, flow and there is a demarcation sometimes what happen uh, this demarcation because of this uh, failing lv and pulmonary function upper limb will get the uh, desaturated blood and lower limb will receive the saturated blood now how you monitor this by placing the spo2 on the uh, right hand because the right subclavian artery is the first branch of the uh, uh, after the coronary artery into the aorta so by that way you come to know the uh, uh, the functions of the lv and whether the differential hypoxia hypoxia is occurring or not also you can take the abg from the right radial artery and by that way you can also diagnose the differential hypoxia thank you